Uh, welcome to the One Minute Late Open PAM and BSD talk at BSD CAN 2016. My name is Michael Lucas. Uh, I write a bunch of computer books that for some unknown reason a lot of you people buy. Footnotes. Ah, footnotes. Thank you, <laughs> obviously. Um, so, why am I up here? Uh, been a sysadmin for 20 years. Uh, been using Unix since the late 80s. Sorry, started in Multics. Anyone remember Multics? Yeah. Ultrix was later. Uh, yes, I, I've been on Ultrix. Thank you so much, Peter, for ripping the scab off that memory. Uh, yeah, we're, we're not discussing which Unix is worse in this talk. That will be this evening at the bar. Um, I'm also a founding member of the Southeast Michigan BSD user group. Uh, so if you are in Detroit and you do BSD, uh, look to see if our meeting is a, a convenient time and place for you. Uh, websites and uh, one of the goals of presenting this talk here was to m drive myself to finish the book Pam Mastery before BSD can. So I am the author of the forthcoming book, B Pam Mastery. Um, let's talk about Pam. <laughs> Pluggable authentication modules. <laughs> uh, Peter? Uh, I understand you're easily confused, and at any, any time you wish, you are welcome to leave. <laughs> <sighs> so, uh, back in the early days of Unix, if you wanted to change authentication methods in a piece of software, usually you had to write the code for this authentication module and recompile the software. If you wanted to do anything custom, system-wide, you were basically doomed. And then Sun came up with this brilliant idea. Let's make authentication methods libraries. And we can link programs against them and configure these libraries so that all programs can share common authentication bug, uh, backends. <laughs> and for people who were there at the time, I, I've asked several, and overwhelmingly, they tell me that PAM really was, initially, an improvement. Um, the problem is, any good idea can be taken too far. And now, 20-some years later, PAM is the closest thing we have to black magic. Uh, if you want to configure PAM, you pretty much have to sacrifice a small animal at the 13th full moon of the year, uh, uh, we, we, no, no, not a goat. We, we have too many goats in the BSD community. Um, so, PAM in general is a shared library that programs can uh, attach to for authentication routines, and then the it in turn links in other libraries that call in specific authentication methods. Uh, something you'll also hear about in PAM and authentication is this AAA concept. Uh, if you've taken any security certification, uh, they talk about authentication, authorization, and accounting. PAM swallows all of this. It eats it whole. Uh, PAM can also perform other functions like making home directories, mounting home directories, enabling service when a user logs in or fails to log in. Uh, it also plays into this idea of multi-factor authentication, which uh, I'm fairly confident that most of you know, but you can authenticate based on either something you have, something you know, and something you are. 
So you wouldn't want to use two passwords to authenticate, but you might use um, your, uh, your password, a gene test, and your ability to complete a specific Dance Dance Revolution step as an authentication method. Um, you'll also see a lot of fingerprint readers, and I'm, I'm going to gripe any time you let me that a fingerprint is a username. It is not a password. Um, you, well, you can change it, but you need to read some, either, either read a lot of crime novels or watch a lot of John Carpenter movies. Probably. So, limitations with PAM. Um, PAM cannot directly inter interact with clients. This means if you have a complicated authentication system, such as uh, Kerberos, you have to do additional work, and that's why people have written additional authentication libraries. Um, not all operating systems use PAM. Uh, OpenBSD, for one. Uh, one of the things that is really annoying about PAM is there is no approved formal standard. Uh, there's an XOPEN document from 1997 that is generally regarded as the defining standard. But nobody, no certifying body has come out and said, boom, this is the official way of doing it. As a result of this, there's no official approved language for the various parts of a PAM rule. It might be called uh, a, some, a, a rule could be a type, it could be called a facility. Um, you have many people on the internet who have invented their own language for describing the parts of PAM rules. So I, of course, in researching this book, uh, choose the terms that I liked best from whatever source pleased me. Uh, and if you go digging into PAM, you need to know that people will call it whatever the heck they want. Um, and of course, taken all together, um, this makes sysadmins use some really, really bad language. Um, especially if they're running bash. So, if you are implementing PAM, uh, anyone can, but a after spending the last six months diving into FreeBSD, Dragonfly, CentOS, and Ubuntu, I'm firmly convinced that not everybody should implement PAM. Uh, I'm focusing on uh, BSD systems and uh, the OpenBSD, uh, sorry, the OpenPAM implementation uh, in this talk. However, uh, Linux PAM is a huge PAM implementation with a lot of options and variants. And as far as I can tell, it has been forked without being renamed. So, uh, it's not yet part of System D. I'm pretty sure, however, soon System D will swallow all variants, and you can choose which one with a System D command line flag. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. Everything is fine, and of course, Solaris, where uh, Pam originated from, most. PAM rule structures that we have today derive from the original Solaris-style rules. However, Solaris has, in the last few years, uh, completely redone how they do rules. So Solaris rules look nothing like Solaris rules. Worst of all, these three different types of PAM are almost compatible. Um, the way people, the way OS packagers write their rules is almost compatible. So when you're working with PAM, <laughs> they promised me sound. 
but this is pretty much how you feel anytime you go near Pam. Um, <laughs> so don't, don't get too discouraged. Everybody feels this way. So open Pam, uh, Des wrote it under contract for FreeBSD. It is much smaller than Linux Pam, uh, much simpler. Uh, the modules for Pam, open Pam actually come from FreeBSD. Uh, it's a BSD product, but it's just as buggy as everybody else's Pam, and they're all buggy. If you want, if you are looking for a place to contribute to the BSD community. Go to the FreeBSD problem database and search for PAM uh, and start closing some PRs because then you'll get sucked into Dragonfly and NetBSD and all of, all of these other things. Uh, you will make an impact and people will. Uh, they, they may not thank you, but, <laughs> but they will swear less and it feels like the same thing. Um, Open PAM notably does not support the Linux PAM extended controls. This is not a bug. So, who uses it? Uh, OpenBSD does not. Uh, they're, they're somewhat biased on PAM in general. They use BSD authentication instead. Uh, I'm just going to summarize it as nope. Um, FreeBSD, Dragonfly, OpenPAM. OSX also uses OpenPAM, uh, but they've added their own special Apple sh uh, sugar. And <laughs> so, whenever you talk about authentication, we go, uh, SSH comes up. SSH keys don't fit into PAM. They have extra information that doesn't fit through the, the specified PAM interface. What you can do is tell OpenSSH to consult PAM as part of the login uh, using the, the keyboard interactive uh, authentication method and challenge response authentication. The password authentication option tells OpenSSH to use its own password checker, not PAM. So, when you configure PAM on a modern system, as in not Solaris, your configuration files go in Etsy PAM.D because we stole the config from Linux. Uh, and since it's a BSD style system, user local Etsy PAM.D. Uh, the configuration for each service is in a file named after that service. So your SSHD config is in etsy pam.d sshd. Each PAM statement has four parts. The statement type, facility, uh, chain name, uh, a bunch of other names, but it's the first thing. Uh, you then have a PAM control, uh, which is also called a bunch of things. But I liked control, so I'm using that in the book and hereby defining the language. Uh, the PAM shared library and then options to the library. That gets you something like this. This is from a, a FreeBSD system, I believe. And we have here an, an auth rule with the required control. Uh, the shared library is pamunix.so, and these are the options. And you'll have four types of rules, auth, account, session, and password. We'll talk about what each of these is. So a, a PAM module is just a shared library that implements some kind of auth. Um, it can work with one or more types of rules, can provide different functions. So PAM Unix is the... Uh, Password authentication, Etsy password, Etsy group, all the usual. PAM SSH lets you do authentication based on user SSH keys. Enter 
Enter your username and passphrase at the console to log in. Uh, Pam last log, feeds last, and then here's a couple things I'm hoping people write once the book comes out. Uh, Pam breathalyzer, <laughs> because yeah, that that really could work. So you can well, that's a po <laughs> can you log in only when you're drunk? That it would be an option you set it with the module. Um, you know, we definitely need a, 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 a Dance Dance Revolution pad authentication because you have your own methods. And, you know, Pam Gene Scan because that's an unquestionable username unless you're a twin. Uh, I believe uh, Giles Yokozuki wrote the Unity Off module for uh, drum rhythms. For drum rhythms. Oh, excellent. That could easily be ported over to a Pam module. So. Yeah. So there's four kinds. I hate you all. There are four types of PAM rules or chains. An auth rule verifies user credentials, that you are who you say you are. That's a password, your gene scanner. The account determines if access is valid. Maybe your password was correct, but the account is only open Monday through Friday, 9 to 5. Or, you know, the breathalyzer, you are not drunk enough to log on to this system. Uh, a system, uh, <laughs> a, a session rule is, is for setting up the user session environment, you know, mount the home directory, uh, make sure that they have uh, shell configuration and such. A password rule is used only for authentication credential changes, such as a password change. And a group of rules of the same type is called a chain or a stack. So here we've got uh, a PAM auth chain, where PAM comes along and says, OK, these are all auth rules. I'm going to do this rule, then this rule, then this rule, then this rule. Now the annoying thing with PAM is it's not a Unix ACL. For something like PF, we have a very strict syntax that says yes or no. This may happen, this may not happen. Uh, for something like file system permissions, even if you're using something unholy like NFS v4 ACLs. Uh, yes or no. PAM doesn't work that way. PAM is a committee. And it's not just any committee. It's a committee at some ancient Baroque educational institution where the various members of each committee are all given special names and their roles were defined, you know, uh, Cromwell defined one chair that would exist and Isaac Newton defined another um, and, you know, King George VI, the third, and defined special rights and responsibilities with each. So, uh, and each committee member has certain ways that they can and cannot vote, and that vote goes down and around. Uh, so you may have uh, something like the committee chair. Uh, the, the arch-chancellor says, uh, yes, I, I want this to happen unless anyone explicitly says no. And, you know, next, uh, the bursar says, well, I'll, I'll go along with that. Uh, the, the lecturer in recent runes says, uh, I object, but my vote really doesn't count for anything. Um, and, and the senior wrangler says, well, all right. And, you know, the librarian is there and can only take notes. So, uh, each PAM module is queried with the authentication information and returns a code. The code PAM success means the request was successful. I, I accede to this request. 
Anything else means a request failed. Uh, all success looks alike. All PAM failures are unique. Uh, and there are different kinds of error codes for different problems. So let's look at how a module can vote. The one thing you'll commonly see is required. This module must approve for access to be allowed. If this module says no, access is denied. O other people down the chain can vote, but nobody gets to say yes, or, or nobody can effectively say yes. So here, the user must pass the breathalyzer, Dance Dance Revolution, and the gene scanner to be allowed access. Then there's requisite, which is required with attitude. The module must return success for access to be allowed, but if the module returns anything else, the chain immediately stops processing. Uh, no further call to any module is made. What this means is it, it short circuits the rest of the authentication process. You don't bother which also means that you can leak information to the user or an intruder because the later modules didn't work. You aren't prompted for later things. Optional modules get to sit in on the proceedings, but they don't get a vote. They get to do things like make entries in last log or uh, send log entries elsewhere, uh, Slowing things down in case of a bad password. Uh, fetch your dry cleaning, what have you. Um, optional modules normally go at the front of a chain. Uh, that's per every specification I've read, even though none are official. Um, and since they all go at the front, that's why Ubuntu and, uh, sorry, that's why Debian and CentOS put them at the end of the chain. A sufficient is uh, if nobody says no and the module returns success, access is granted. Uh, nobody objected, so yes, we are done voting. <laughs> uh, flimsy desk. <laughs> sufficient never says no. It doesn't know how to say no. Um, it's like Henning when you offer him another beer. <laughs> uh, it, if it fails, voting continues and others get a chance. I the dark mode. <laughs> we, you all heard him. How many people are here? Remember, you in English is plural. I, I count like 60 beers coming your way. <laughs> That's going to be good. No, no, because once I, I've experienced you saying yes to enough beers that I don't want to stick around long enough to see you say no. <laughs> so let, let's talk about sufficient for a moment. Sufficient is dangerous. Here we have our, our three test modules that are all sufficient. But if nobody says yes, nobody explicitly says no either. Um, this, depending on which PAM you're using, this could be really bad. Uh, normally, open PAM does say no, but that's where this PAM deny module comes in. You stick that at the end of your sufficient chain, just so you explicitly say no, yes. Yes. Mm-hmm. Now, if it's required, the required statement must say yes. If you have three required statements, all three must say yes. If that fails, you, you know, this is absolutely essential for authentication. For example, with required uh, PAM Unix module, you must enter the correct username and password. Other modules can run, but 
you've got to enter the right username and password. Uh, correct. Also, if you put three requisites in a row, the first requisite must say yes or the chain stops. Requisite is a bit of a jerk. So, this lets you do some fun things like alternate methods of authentication. Let's say, you know, if if you pass the breathalyzer test, test you get in. You're, you're fine. Um, and the chain stops processing. If you fail the breathalyzer, but you are still sober enough to pass the Dance Dance Revolution pad, um, and you know the gene scanner says you're you, then you also get in. So you have two different paths to get into the machine. Then there's this. Well, if you did required and then required again, um, yes, it would be the same. Um, it depends on how you have other rules arranged, because you may have logging, et cetera. Well, you would want, this is a sufficient rule, so you would want to deny at the end of this. As this stands, you would get in, because you passed the required. Yes. So, put a deny statement at the end of your chains if you're using sufficient. If you are drunk enough, you, you're either not you already or you are your truest self. Correct. That's what I get for trying to keep my slides simple. Again, I hate you all. So binding. This is a required control that stops the chain on success. If it fails, the rest of the chain can proceed, but still no. I have never seen a binding control used in the real world. However, it appears in all of the proto specifications. So I'm listing it here because I, if I didn't, some bright person would stand up and say, actually, I saw binding on a hacked up Ultrix box <laughs> in Peter Wem's basement. Uh, realistically, if someone says bind in an LDAP context, they're talking about LDAP. However, if you want to be a jerk, this is your opportunity in that discussion. And just to make things complicated now, there are include statements. So here what we've done, we have um, I believe this is the uh, console login from FreeBSD. There are three modules here that run if you're in the console, and then it pulls in this file called system. And system contains the system-wide defaults. So just because a file includes, if you look at a service PAM config and you see two statements, if one of them is an include, this may get very long very quickly. And finally, there's modules, or sorry, there's module flags, which let you modify the behavior. You know, if your blood alcohol is uh, 0.08 or more, you can't log in. This lets you set, you know, your user policy. Um, and here, you know, we are discriminatory if the user's gene scan shows they are a Neanderthal, we don't let them log in. Uh, again, Henning has a problem. <laughs> I, I don't understand that remark. 
So, so <laughs> some common flags you'll see. Debug. Debug is your friend. If Pam isn't working, fire up debug and see what gets lost, logged or lost. Um, no warn, you, you are very quiet to the user. Uh, use first pass means don't prompt the user again and try the same password. You might have three modules in a row that use passwords. You try to reuse or use pass, use first pass means use that password automatically. Try first pass means try that previous password and if it doesn't work, ask for another one. Um, expose account, uh, names names, it'll say things like that's not a valid account. Um, and there is this used map pass thing which is stupid so I won't talk about it. So what'll happen when someone logs in they pass through our sample uh, auth chain. We then check the account chain to see, is this account available at this time? Check for things like, you know, is there an Etsy no login file? Uh, are the users permitted hours in? Uh, this session one, uh, as part of the account setup, you set up a uh, you log to last, and if they're trying to change the password, we fire up Pam Unix. Modules that you'll see a lot uh, in OpenPAM, actually anywhere except Solaris, uh, all of these names come from Solaris, and Solaris has thrown them away. So, uh, Pam Unix, Etsy password. Linux Pam has this Pam wheel thing. Um, PAM group is what we use in OpenPAM to check group membership. Now, the reason I mention Linux PAM here is PAM, sorry, Linux PAM also has a PAM group module with completely different function than the OpenPAM PAM group uh, because programmers hate us. PAM deny, PAM permit. Uh, PAM secure TTY checks to see if this is a secure terminal like the console. Um, last log feeds the accounting system and no login does the Etsy no login check. So you can write these chains. Uh, and inevitably, anytime you touch PAM, suddenly it won't do what you want it to do. This is how you actually debug PAM. Um, the debug flag, first of all, PAM echo feeds stuff back to the user, and PAM exec runs arbitrary commands <laughs> as part of authentication. <laughs> so the first question I always ask myself when PAM goes belly up is did I put the .so at the end of the module name? Um, but let's talk PAM echo quick. So here I've added a PAM echo statement in front of each rule in the auth chain. So when the user tries to log in, it says what module runs. So if you think your PAM may be bailing out early, uh, PAM echo is the printf of authentication. For a little more fun, PAM exec, uh, here I've written a, uh, a simple shell script, PAM debug, and it takes one option, the name of the module it's about to run. And this terribly complicated script checks the environment, greps for PAM, and logs it all. So you'll get all these PAM internal variables and you can then dig into the module man page and uh, provided you don't gouge out your own eyes, you can hopefully figure out the problem. So, and what time does this talk end? I have like 20 minutes or so, don't I? We get an hour, okay. Um, 
One of my personal favorites for add-on authentication. <sighs> I have, I, uh, Peter, I wish to never hear you make that kind of satisfied sigh ever again. <laughs> Sorry, I, I'm a sysadmin. I, the distinction between pain and pet pleasure is lost. Um, so, do you use SSH agent authentication? Do you forward it to your systems? Some people do, some people don't. Depends on your environment. Uh, I used to work in a place where our goal was to never type a password into a remote system. Uh, but they wanted to manage through sudo. So, this uh, lets you authenticate this lets Pam check for a, an SSH agent with a key, private key and memory matching your authorized key file. Um, essentially, this is a, a, this is a lame two-factor authentication. It's something you know and something you have being a file. Uh, so, FreeBSD has a package, just about everybody except Debian has a package. Uh, in order to use it though, in pseudowords, you have to tell it to keep your authentication socket variable or it can't find your agent. Uh, and here, we tell it uh, in sudo to call the module and here is the authorized keys file. Now, when I did this last, we changed, we had enough servers that we managed each user's authorized keys file in Ansible. They were in Etsy SSH keys in a file named after the user. And if you wanted, if you updated your key file, you sent me your key file and I distributed it to 150 machines. Uh, this was in part so an intruder couldn't break into a system, copy an, another key into the user's authorized keys file and uh, get sudo. So that's one common thing. Another module you will hear about a lot is Google Authenticator. How many of you use Google Authenticator? Okay. Um, TOTP. Uh, <laughs> how many of you use Google Authenticator? With that? Okay. Um, Google Authenticator is TOTP. Common misconception, it does not phone home. You are not asking Google if you may log on to your server. Um, however, what it does is it computes a time-based uh, one-time password based on a shared secret. So there are two ways it can run. One of them is, uh, is to create a list of one-time passwords. Uh, and this is stupid because it requires you somehow avoid butt dialing logins on your cell phone. Um, and the other way is time-based, which is what I would tell you to use. That does require that you fix the clocks on your host and your phone or whatever your device is. There are other reasons for fixing your clocks. Uh, hopefully this is not the one that drives you to finally do it. You know, in theory, you should have done this before. So, uh, again, on a FreeBSD box, although it's, there's Dragonfly and uh, OSX and whatever that uses OpenPAM, there is a PAM Google Authenticator and a libqr encode. The FreeBSD port is kept up pretty much to date. And you don't have to use the Google Auth app. There are, uh, this is a standard and 
There are Android and Apple apps. There are Windows apps. There is a Chrome pl plugin. Uh, you will want a QR code reader just to get the secret into your phone easily because uh, unless you are capable of typing a 20-digit string of random characters from your screen to your device better than I can. Um, and it also lets you uh, uh, control how often each code is used. Uh, it lets you control how accurate your clock has to be. And it can do some basic throttling to throttle your uh, authentication attempts uh, per 30 second window. So a user who needs to use Google Authenticator runs the command. Uh, the script asks if you want time-based tokens. You say yes, it spits everything out. If you are doing this for users, script for them. Because they are incapable of answering yes to a question consistently. They, just, they can't. Um, and it's very simple to plug in, but if you plug this into the system default, think about this for a moment. If you have set Google Authenticator that you can only use each password once and each one is good for 30 seconds, this means you can only authenticate once every 30 seconds. So you log in window, uh, you type SU or, or sudo, you have to wait 30 seconds until you can use that. Um, and meanwhile, you have a service outage and you are not a happy person. So th think carefully about where you want to use Google Authenticator, if you do. Uh, no, not th well, I'm sure some clever person has figured out how to do that, but it's not in the box. Yeah, um, I turn off, w when I was experimenting with Google Authenticator for the book, I turned off rate limiting. Now, there are environments uh, Oath certi certification says each code may only be used once. I am not in an environment where I need oath certification, so forget the rate limit. Um, you could also choose to use a different authentication method for sudo. Uh, unfortunately, tmux can let you reuse one login session infinitely. Um, Ham SSH is a fun module that lets you skip password authentication and use your SSH key to log in to the system. This is useful in the con, you know, when you wake up in the morning, you go to your workstation and you know you have to enter your password, enter your passphrase, and your day can begin. Because of course, we all log out of our home workstation at the end of the day. Every one of us does, because we're good and decent people. Uh, again, except Henning. Uh, so here, uh, we have the, the usual two FreeBSD modules that we're not going to bother to talk about. Uh, and PAM SSH is sufficient. And then there's PAM Unix, which is required. You log in in the morning. Or you go to your console in the morning, you enter your user, username, and it prompts you for your SSH password. If you enter your password correct, we pass phrase correctly, that's sufficient. It logs you in. You are never asked for a password. Um, if you cannot type your SSH passphrase first thing in the morning, uh, then it lets you fall through and try a password from the system. Now, you can argue about whether or not this is a good idea. It depends entirely on your environment. I will say that uh, uh, deployments other than OpenPAM use this module differently. Um, 
CentOS out of the box, if I recall correctly, you have to enter both. Whereas Debian assumes that your passphrase is identical to your password. Uh, of course it does. And one thing that you hear a lot of whinging about uh, is PAM list file, which is this open PAM thing. Sorry, which is this Linux PAM thing. It says, check this list of authorized or denied users. And if, it's, if the user's in the list, let him in. Uh, open PAM doesn't include it, and if you go to the forums, you'll see people whinging about this. But the truth is, PAM list file is trivial with PAM exec. Um, and here's a really naive script that I'm expecting some of you to just tear to shreds right now to check to see if a string appears in a file and return something to PAM. Uh, Peter, would you like to hit Glenn or shall I go up there? You're afraid, afraid of Glenn? I think that's the saddest thing I've ever heard. <laughs> if, you want to ch if you want to deny users, add this tricky little exclamation point to the front. And that's it. You, you yeah, there's, <laughs> well, as I said, you've, yeah, you've, you have fulfilled my expectations. Well done. Where, wait a minute, a sync, oh this inverts it. It inverts the return code. Or, or it, if not, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, yeah, it's in there. Yep. Um, if it helps, I needed like uh, 45 minutes with Google to find it. But, yes? PAM exec runs as root. You can uh, drop privileges here easily enough. Yes, there are lots of reasons not to use PAM exec. You, yes, Th there are. Lots of wonderful things you can use with PAM exec for. I would recommend you do things like sanitize your input and usernames should not have a space in them or back ticks. <laughs> oh, yes, it's as the user doing the. Ch so if you're trying to log in as. Uh, into SSH, it'll log in as the, or it will run as the SSH user. Uh, and since this, uh, yeah, and so it's not quite as bad as that. So you plug the script in, and there you go. So uh, you folks anticipated me just a bit. Pam exec is not an unparalleled good. Um, we instinctively automate everything. We script everything. Oh, this needs doing. Let's write a shell script. Yay! Um, so if you decide it's time to authenticate against the NoSQL database, and I'll just write a shell script, I strongly encourage you to look for a PAM module that does your thing. Let someone else find the obvious bugs. Um, find modules that other people have already debugged rather than writing your own. Uh, well, 
I prefer to find my fun in other ways, like, um, no, 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 it's, it's, you know, I'll use PAM exec, like, for if the user's name appears in this file, uh, run tr on some random file in their home directory. Uh, something like that. I prefer to think of it as randomware. <laughs> so, uh, questions. I have like 10 minutes left. Um, so, I, I'll take some questions. And, uh, but while we're talking questions, uh, I want the IRS to pay for my trip to BSD CAN. So, here is the commercial. Questions? David? Because Google wrote it. And if Google wrote it, it is named Google. Yes, sir. No, I have no inside information on the Dragonfly PAM discussion. I'm aware of it. Um, the, the short answer is PAM is infuriating. Glenn. Uh, Sometimes, if you add the debug flag, you can tail the system log, but it won't. It, it is difficult to feed things back to the reader, to the user. No, no, Pam Echo is your friend. Um, Yes, Pam Echo goes to the user. Uh, I use the debug script a lot to just feed everything in, into the system log. Yes? Okay, okay. compile time options on the many different versions of Pam. Is that a open Pam thing? Or is that one of the? E okay. <laughs> Recompile libc, Glenn, and you can get the debugging you want. Another question. Uh, Adam. Yes, there are PAM modules specifically for abusing the user environment. Uh, Linux PAM has more features for environment abuse, abuse simply because uh, BSD had environments and users and booting for decades before PAM was invented. And Linux PAM kind of took those features in because they had to do something with it and Heaven forbid they check prior art. Uh, another question. Someone, anyone. Adam again. Um, in straight PAM, no. If you go into Linux PAM and some of their modules, that is possible. Um, that is where the PAM extended controls come in and if the extended controls are not enough, there is a Linux PAM module specifically for that sort of optional decision making. 
and some people have successfully uh, gl glued this. Oh, no, you can go, but the goat stays for the talk. Are, are you attached to this arm? Thank you. Um, people have successfully gotten this to work on OpenPAM. Um, and I'll thank you not to bring it up again. There are children present. Yes, uh, I can imagine you being burned at the stake as well. <laughs> yes? Well, the LDAP PAM module is actually not the problem. LDAP is the problem. Uh, LDAP, LDAP PAM is complicated because everybody's scheme is complicated and Everybody does slightly different things and followed a different how-to, and anyone when they're first deploying LDAP has no clue how painfully their arbitrary decisions will come back to haunt them. Yes, Peter. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Peter. And when it comes to pain, Peter knows his pain. I, I trust his opinion. Yes. Alan. Uh, that's, that's a modern config management program called Ansible. I understand. Yeah. You can yeah. Yes. Oh, there is, there is a command line option for that. Yeah, it's in the module. Yeah, it's, uh, it's absolutely by the book. Follow it. <laughs> Any other questions? Okay. I have two minutes left, so uh, you can come up and ask me your embarrassing question in private for two minutes. Thank you for coming.